Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and this is my mom, Susan. Good morning. We are actually in my mom's kitchen because we are prepping Thanksgiving. My mom and I for years have had a tradition where the day before the holiday, we take time and we actually prep all the food and have it all ready so that on the actual holiday we're celebrating, we can just throw things in the oven and it makes it a lot less stressful and we can kind of clean up the majority of the mess that we're gonna make today. So on the day of the party, we don't have to worry about cooking, cleaning, and doing the party. We can just focus on having a good time with family. My family, we celebrate holidays usually the week before the actual holiday. What that does is it gives me and my siblings the actual holiday free so that we can have our own family holiday with just our immediate family or we can go to our in-laws and it just makes it a lot less stressful. We're not trying to juggle multiple Thanksgivings in one day or multiple holidays in one day. We can kind of focus on one family at a time. Look at what I found. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> I've hilarious. never ever seen that. So my mom. <laughs> I had to show you. These are pumpkins I just brought over from my garden and pumpkin seeds have sprouted in the pumpkin. That's Inside. crazy. I've we have to take a picture that. of that. Yeah. Can you take a picture of that, mom? Uh, yeah. And text it to me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, there's multiple of yeah. them. But that one had the leaves so you can see it really well. This is sprouted. That's crazy. So good thing we're processing them. So I brought over a bunch of pumpkins that I grew in my garden this year. My mom is cutting them up and we're going to process them and we're going to make a bunch of pumpkin pies. I also brought over some turkey stock so that we can make the stuffing and the gravy with turkey stock. I have here some home canned apple cider. Apple cider in the U.S. just means juice. If you're from overseas, this is not hard cider. We call apple juice when it's alcoholic hard cider and just unfiltered apple juice cider. So that's what and this is. The apple juice is for basting the ham. Oh, I didn't know that. She just asked me to bring it, so I brought it. I also brought an apple pie. I prepped this apple pie a couple weeks ago. It's been in my freezer. We're actually gonna throw this in the free oven in just a minute. And I brought over some frozen rolls. These are some homemade rolls that I prepped at the same time I prepped this pumpkin pie. And we're gonna bake these actually tomorrow. We have a busy day today. We are gonna prep all the food. I'm gonna actually unwrap this apple pie while we're talking. We have all the sides we're gonna to prep today. If you'll notice, taped around my kitchen cupboards, and it's not very glamorously taped, because I wanna protect my kitchen cupboards, I use painter's tape and not scotch tape. On the cupboards are all my checklists and my recipes, so that they're easy to see, easy to check off, and everything is out and it will be much more streamlined when we're doing, I don't know, about eight dishes or 10 dishes. And she puts the recipes where we're gonna prep them. So these are the recipes that are gonna be cooked on the stove and in the oven. This is her baking cabinet. And we have our pumpkin pie recipe and our chocolate chip muffin recipe that we're gonna be prepping right here. So we're not having to search around and find the recipes. It just makes baking, it just makes cooking that much easier. So to cook the apple pie that I made earlier, it's still frozen solid. I just unwrapped it. I'm gonna put it on a cookie sheet with some parchment because it could boil over. I'm gonna cover this with a little bit of foil just so that it doesn't, the top doesn't get too crispy before the inside gets cooked. And we're gonna stick this in a 400 and, nope, not this one. Whoa. Oh, don't drop it. And we're gonna stick this in a 415 degree oven for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, I'm gonna turn it down to 350. This is probably gonna take a good hour, hour and a half to cook because it's frozen solid. And we will set a timer. I'm notorious for not setting a timer. So we have a whole list of things we're gonna do today. Today we are gonna make pumpkin pies. My mom is prepping the pumpkin right now. We're gonna make cranberry jalapeno dip. So good. We're gonna prep a veggie and pickle tray. We have to make some allergen friendly hummus. We are gonna do some stuffed peppers, some sausage cream cheese stuffed peppers that are so good. They're kind of like a updated version of a jalapeno popper. We're gonna prep the turkey and the ham. We need to make the mashed potatoes. I do a, we do a make ahead mashed potatoes and we'll show you how to do that. We're gonna make cranberry sauce, green beans, Brussels sprouts. We're gonna prep the dinner rolls that I made and we're gonna bake the pies and then we're gonna make an allergen friendly cupcake recipe for my nephew. They have quite a few allergies and they can't have typically what we have. I'm gonna peel 10 pounds of potatoes here. and My mom is prepping the pumpkin for the pumpkin pie. She just put a bag in here so she can collect all the seeds and the guts of the pumpkins. I'm gonna bring this home and give it to my chickens. The reason we've decided to do the pumpkins and the potatoes first is because these are gonna have to take time to cook and we wanna be doing other things while they're cooking. So this kind of seemed like the best first option to be the most time efficient. All the recipes that we are gonna be making today can be found at scratchpantry.com. 
and I will leave a link to them down in the description box. I'm not being 100% perfect with these potatoes, but I'm getting the majority of the peels off here. I'm gonna get them all peeled up and then I'll wash them and I'll stick them right into this pot. about these little bit of peels going down the garbage disposal. I, I just don't want all of that peel going down. You have a nice My dog's favorite place is to be underneath the oven. Just right here. Are you just right here? Yes. Okay, here's all the food from the outside refrigerator that we need to prep and get ready. So we have three things going. We have our mashed potatoes going. We've got our pumpkin down here roasting for the pies. And then we have our apple pie going. My mom right now is going to start making the sausage for the stuffed peppers. You guys are dressing. Oh, and the dressing. So we're going to cook the sausage. Are you going to cook them both together and then just divide it in half? Um, I could. Are they the same sausage? Uh, spicy for the peppers and regular oh. for the dressing. So we'll probably have to do it separate. Yeah, I will do it separate. We typically refer to it as stuffing, even though it's technically dressing, meaning we don't actually stuff the bird. So back on this pan, we're going to get the sausage going for the stuffing and then the stuffed peppers. And while my mom is cooking the sausage, I'm going to prep the vegetables to go into the stuffing. So we need onions and celery. My mom is taking the garbage can out from underneath the sink so we can just throw stuff right in. We don't have to constantly open the cupboard back and forth, especially for hands or gooky. It's just nice to be able to just toss stuff into the garbage. Protects my cupboard doors. How many stalks of celery? Mom? How many stalks of celery? Oh, I just cut from the end. I don't know how many you want. Since I'm cutting the celery, I'm going to cut the celery for both the vegetable plate and for the stuffing since I have it all out at the same time. I did a poll in the community tab on YouTube and I asked what were people's favorite side dishes for Thanksgiving and the overwhelming majority was stuffing. Stuffing is my favorite Thanksgiving side dish and I was thinking if it's everyone's favorite, why do we typically only eat it once a year? Or I only eat it once a year because at Christmas we don't do turkey, we do a prime rib and ham. I love stuffing and, and I was just thinking if it's everyone's favorite side dish, why do we typically only eat it once a year? I don't know. Let me know if you guys know why you think that is. So I'm going to take the inner part of the celery, the part with the leaves, and I'm going to put this part inside the stuffing. So we're going to cook this down and the outer ones we're going to put on the vegetable tray. So my mom puts post-it notes on all her serving platters so we know exactly what dish goes for what. So she just handed me the vegetable platter and we're going to go ahead and put the vegetables right on here. She did this last night, so we don't actually have to really think about it today. All we have to do is find the post-it note with the correct platter, and we just move on from there. This tool. The pastry knife. My mom likes to use a pastry knife to chop up her meat. It works great for taco meat because it gets it all really nice and fine. Okay, I'm just working on projects here. The potatoes started boiling over, which I hardly could have imagined because there's four inches of head space, but I had it on high. So I'll vent it a little bit and it won't boil over. I put a, um, a stick of butter in here with the onions and celery for the dressing. And we're gonna cook that down so they're good and soft. Then in the back is the spicy sausage 
and I'm going to put some cream cheese in it and melt that up. I think I'll just leave it and not melt it until I have the peppers prepared because I don't want the cheese to kind of separate. So I'm just going to leave it like that until the peppers are ready to be stuffed. Okay. So did you explain the cream cheese and everything? Yes. Oh, I said I'm not going to mix it yet till they're ready to go in the pepper so the cheese doesn't separate. I clearly wasn't here listening to what she was saying. <laughs> we do use a seasoning packet from the stuffing mix, but we do also like to add some fresh sage. Sage is the flavor of Thanksgiving. Should I prep the peppers now? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to prep the peppers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some gloves on because I'm working with jalapenos here. The first time I made salsa, the recipe said to wear gloves. I thought I'm tough, this doesn't hurt at all. And I chopped all those jalapenos without gloves. And then I went to take a shower. Not a good plan. I had that oil in places you wouldn't want the oil to be. <laughs> and I actually called the emergency nurse line to say what can I do, my body and my face are on fire. And they said basically nothing. <laughs> So I'm chopping the top off and then I'm cutting them in half and then I am going to de-seed them. I just take a spoon and run it along the rib and take that out. These are one of my favorite appetizers. They're super easy to make. These are perfect not just for a holiday, but these would be really good for a football game or really anything you have people over. And you can prep them ahead so all you have to do is throw them in the oven when you're ready to serve. While I'm here, I do need two jalapenos for the cranberry salsa. I'm just gonna chop these up super fine since I still have these gloves on. I did de-stem them and de-seed them. Here's a bowl for them. We're gonna do the same thing with these sweet peppers. Is that information? The onion, sage, and celery are all sautéed and slightly caramelized. They smell heavenly. I'm going to dump them in here. The uh, sausage is on the bottom. Seasonings in there. The bread croutons are in there. I just melted the cream cheese and the sausage and just mixed it together. And then we're going to stuff the peppers in just a second. So we're going to add some of the turkey stock now, mix it up, and then we'll probably add a few more cups tomorrow because it will soak in overnight. That smells so good. It smells heavenly. When you look up the recipe, will be linked here. Um, it, the original recipe that was my mother-in-law's called for half a pound of hamburger and half a pound of sausage. And in my mind, the choice between hamburger and sausage, it's all sausage. Always. So here is the dish that my mom had post noted with dressing or stuffing. So we know that this is the dish that the stuffing's going in. Okay, here we go. We have our cream cheese sausage mixture here. The easiest way is, honestly, if you have gloves, just to take a little bit and you just stuff it right in the pepper, just like that. If you didn't want to use hot sausage, you, you could use just regular sausage. But with the sweet peppers, the hot sausage is just really good. We might have too many peppers here. My mom is ricing the mashed potatoes right into the crock pot because that's actually how we're going to reheat these mashed potatoes. You can reheat them in the crock pot or in the oven. You could put this in a 9 by 13 dish if you wanted. But we like to try to keep the oven space as free as possible so that we can reheat everything tomorrow and cook these peppers and things like that. Because that is the one thing when you're when you're doing a big holiday meal is trying to get everything out of the oven hot at the same time. And it's usually the oven space that becomes the limiting factor there. So we really like to do this in the crock pot. We've done this for years and it works perfectly. She went ahead and riced them right into the crock pot so she can add the rest of the ingredients and then we don't have to dirty another dish. I prefer them riced because it's less handling of the potatoes and they don't get gummy and they don't get slimy and they don't get sticky. But that's just my opinion and you just rice them up and put the sour cream in and put the cream cheese in, put some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, and in, mix it all up, put it into the refrigerator in the morning. I take it out, put it on the counter for an hour or two to warm up, and then um, 
on my uh, countdown sheet. I put it in the crock pot on high. So this is how many peppers we got. I'm gonna wrap them up and these are gonna go in the refrigerator. My mom's gonna take a second just to do a few dishes and I'm gonna get the rest of the vegetables prepped. Since I had a few extra peppers that we didn't stuff, I went ahead and cut those up and put those on the veggie tray. And then we're gonna get this zucchini cut up. Cucumber. Cucumber cut up. The next thing we're gonna focus on as soon as we get some dishes done and we get the veggies chopped up is we are gonna get the pies going because those actually have to bake. Do you want me to do like three peels just so it looks oh, good? Okay. We just have to cut up cute uh, carrots, right? timer that just went off is for the apple pie. It looks like it needs about five more minutes, but we're getting close to it being done. I'm going to start on the pie crust for the pumpkin pies. I'm going to make quite a few pie crusts here because we're going to make, I actually have to bring some pumpkin pies to my mother-in-law's house Thanksgiving. So we're going to make some for this Thanksgiving and then for, for me to bring. I am going to adapt my recipe just a little bit. Normally I make my pie crust in a food processor and I normally do 50% water, 50% vodka. We don't have any vodka here right now, so I'm going to do 100% water, which is totally fine. You can make pie crust with just water, butter, salt, and flour, and a little bit of sugar. It helps to have a little bit of sugar in your pie crust just so you get some caramelization. Just opening up some cold butter here. All right, I have a little bit of sugar here. We're going to put in salt. I'm going to mix this together just a little bit with my hands. And I'm gonna cut this butter up nice and small so that it's easier to incorporate. You wanna work with cold butter anytime you're doing pastry because what happens is when you put that cold butter into the oven, there's moisture, there's water in butter. And if you put it into a hot oven, it will evaporate really quickly. And those pockets where the water was that evaporates, that's what gives you that flakiness. And if you work with too warm of butter, it doesn't allow it to do that, and then it gets greasy. So my mom is doing something pretty cool here. She is working on the pumpkin for me while I decided to go to go ahead and start on the pastry. What was happening is the pumpkin, the pans were full of water, and the, a lot of water on top of the pumpkin. And so I tried tipping it like this and pouring the water out, and I thought, hey, why not just use the colander? Push it out. So that's what we're doing, and we're gonna get a lot more of the water out that way, the liquid. Sure smells good though. That is one thing when you're cooking with fresh pumpkin is there's a lot more moisture in it than with canned pumpkin, and it is really important that you do get that excess liquid out. It'll help intensify your pie flavor if you get some of that liquid out, so it's not so runny, so I have. And it will also set up better, I would imagine, than if, you, if it had this much liquid. So your pie will actually slice nicely. That's the timer for the apple pie. I should have brushed it with an egg wash. I forgot to do that. Gorgeous. When you're making pastry, you really want big chunks of butter. I have some ice water here. You always want to use cold, cold water or liquids, whatever liquids you're using. And I don't measure when I make crust usually because it's all about the texture. You want to use as little as water as possible but you still want to make it workable. Okay, I think we're, this is how I test it. I just grab some and if I can smash it into a ball, we're good. I think we're there. You never want to knead your dough when you're making pastry. Sometimes the bottom will have a little less moisture to it and so you can just take it out, put it on the counter 
and then just add a little bit more moisture just to the bottom. Yes. I didn't follow an actual recipe, so I'm just going to make this what looks like enough for one pie crust. I'm not kneading, I'm just pressing these balls together. Yeah, that was enough to make five pie crusts. We got five pie crusts, they're going in the fridge. This is ready for the refrigerator. I went ahead and stick blended up the pumpkin puree so it's gonna be nice and smooth. Now let's go ahead and make the pumpkin pie filling. So when you're rolling out your pastry, you want to keep it moving because you want to use as little flour as possible to keep it as flaky as possible. You should roll in a couple directions, give it a turn, flop it over. And then I just take my pie plan, I put it over top to see if it fits. That looks pretty good. So we do have the oven still preheated from taking out the other pie from the oven. So as soon as I get this rolled out, we're going to put some pie filling in it and get it in the oven. We're going to get this pie in the oven and then I'm going to do this three more times. I'm going to get the next two pies rolled out, filled, put in the oven. While I'm doing that, my mom is going to get the rubs for the ham and the turkey together and she'll show you how she does that. Okay, I'm going to make the rub for the turkey and the rub for the ham, and since they have some of the same spices, I've just got them all out on the counter. Hey, and I want to I want to show you this. See this spoon? See the see the shape of these spoons? How they are? What I love about them is they fit inside my spice jars. They go all the way in. The round ones don't go inside these size spice jars. And Becky will put a link to them. I bought them and put them in all my daughter's and daughter-in-law's Christmas stockings one year because that's how much I like them. Okay, for the turkey, it is salt, chili powder, paprika. Look how it fits in the jar. Perfect. Black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, dash of cayenne. That was a little more than a dash, I'm gonna pick some up. And I need the cayenne in the other recipe, so I'm just gonna dump it in. Okay, now on to the ham. Brown sugar, paprika. Black pepper, salt, garlic powder, Onion powder, mustard, a new one, I can't get it open. Ham the trigger. Look at this cute little whisk. It's perfect for mixing spices, see? This one's the ham. They're very similar in uh, content except the ham has mustard and brown sugar. I do the ham. I'm going to, you know, it's a spiral sliced ham already, so it just has to be to 140 degrees. So I'm going to put that in the Traeger so that it is enhanced with a smoke uh, scent 
and I'll put the rub on uh, the ham and the turkey tonight. Tomorrow I'll put the ham in the Traeger and the turkey will go in the roasting oven. I'm sure you've seen the, uh, Becky's videos where she has uh, two or three of them and she's making sauces and stuff for canning. Well, I have one and it works perfect for roasting turkey. We got the two pumpkin pies filled here. These are nice deep dish pie pans. I like these pans you have, Mom. Thank you. If you're gonna make a pie, you might as well make a pie. <laughs> So we'll have to rotate those because there's three pies in one oven. So probably halfway through, I'll do a little rotation so they cook evenly. <laughs> I'm getting ready to put the rub on the ham. And if you'll notice, there's a button. Don't leave that button on there because that's plastic and that'll cook and that will not be good for you. What is that for? It's, uh, I think it's to cover the end of the bone. Oh. Because that's where it is. It just sits over the bone. I've never cooked a so ham So maybe it's, you know, it might be so that the bone doesn't scratch the plastic that it's wrapped in and cause it to leak. So anyway, here it is. You put it in, cut side down. And then I'm just gonna apply all this rub on it. And I'm just gonna do it with my hands. And I always double a rub recipe because it's kinda like whether you're gonna put a hamburger or sausage in something, more rub is better than less rub in my opinion. So I'd rather have more on it than less on it because it just adds a dimension of flavor. So it's about 11.30 now and neither my mom or I have had anything to eat today. We've just had some coffee and we've both been up since about 5 a.m. So we're both a little bit hungry at this point. I'm gonna go run and get some lunch and we also forgot cilantro when we went grocery shopping for the cranberry salsa. So I'm gonna get lunch, I'm gonna pick up cilantro. My mom's gonna finish this ham. She's also gonna package up all this rest of this pumpkin into two cups. Ziploc bag so we can freeze it and that's ready to go. So kind of excited that I've processed now all except one pumpkin for the year. So that is the last kind of big food preservation item that I have to do for 2021. And it was fun that we got to do it today. And this is ready. It's going back into the refrigerator until it goes into the Traeger tomorrow morning. All right, I got back. We just ate some lunch, feeling much better. Was starting to get a little bit tired and I think that was just a little bit of low blood sugar. While I was gone, my mom packaged up all the pumpkin for me, and she did a great job. She actually marked them, which I'm not always I'm the best. Claiming, I'm claiming the oh. three-cup one for my giant pie pan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that's awesome. So what else she did while we were gone? She did some tidying. She got the cranberry sauce all made, which cranberry sauce is one of the easiest things to make if you've never made it. It's literally water, sugar, and cranberries. You boil it for 10 minutes, and that's it. And you can strain it if you want it a jelly, or you can leave the cranberries in if you want it whole. My mom right now is prepping a new recipe that we've never made before. It's actually gonna be butternut squash, honey, Brussels sprouts. Bacon. Like, oh, and bacon. Oh yeah. What's, so, not, what's not to like about honey and bacon? <laughs> yeah. And she did cook the bacon too while I was gone. And these pumpkin pies, I think, are basically done. They're not the prettiest pies I've ever made because you can see the crust kind of fell in a little bit. That's because they weren't completely full. These two pie pans were really deep dish. This one, it didn't fall in, but I just didn't have the energy to make it as pretty as I normally do. But they're looking pretty good. They're probably ready to come out of the oven. One thing I actually really like about using glass pie pans, because I have both glass and ceramic, is you can see the bottom. That crust is beautifully golden brown. And when I touch the tops, those feel done. So I think we're gonna take these out of the oven now. One thing to note is I forgot to rotate the pies. Both my mom and I forgot. And we didn't set a timer. I'm notorious <laughs> about that. So the bottom crust got a little crusty, which is, we might just eat the inside part. It's not, it doesn't look burnt, but it's, it's crusty. All right, so what should I do? The cranberry salsa? Yeah. Okay, so my mom doesn't have a food processor. So if you watched my appetizer video where I make the cranberry salsa, I do it in the food processor and you have to be kind of careful when you're making cranberry salsa in the food processor. 
because you don't want to over blitz the cranberries so a lot of the recipes online for cranberry salsa actually do call to chop it by hand but you can use a food processor just know you need to be careful not to over process because the cranberries will almost turn into liquid so one trick if you cut the cranberries by hand put a cookie sheet down that has edges and a cutting board in the inside and that way when you're chopping them they're not going to roll all over the counter and all over the floor will the chickens eat this uh stuff out of the squash mm -hmm. you took my knife not only did you i know i said that you said oh. okay <laughs> <laughs> you, you can use a bigger one yeah, are ready to pop in the refrigerator and we'll roast them tomorrow. I'll tell you another trick. I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it's happened to me. When I'm roasting vegetables and I have parchment paper hanging off the pan and I've got it at 425 and the parchment paper catches on fire. I've done it in the oven and I've done it on the uh, barbecue. So the trick that I have come up with to solve that problem is to just trim it, cut it off, and then it's not higher above and it is uh i guess it's insulated from the pan and it doesn't burn and catch on fire it's ready for the fridge so my mom's going to help process the rest of these ingredients for the salsa so the ingredients are i have two jalapenos in here chopped de-seeded and de-veined my dad is in the other room with the dog if you can hear that <laughs> gizmo's here and my mom's going to chop the cilantro it needs sugar salt green onion green onion did we buy green onion? Okay. And green onion. And the recipe calls for, I don't know, a small amount of cilantro. But again, we like cilantro, and if some is good, more is better. <laughs> I did in the recipe, if you go to scratchpantry.com and you get the recipe, I do say use an entire bunch of cilantro. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I always use the full head of garlic and the full bunch of cilantro. That's the way we do it around here. Yeah. And then we put one more head of garlic in just for good measure. <laughs> I know recipes that call for just one or two cloves of garlic, I just don't quite understand that. Once you get at least one chop through each cranberry, this does become a lot easier because then it's, they're not rolling around on you. Yeah, and the, the cutting board inside the sheet pan really makes a difference. It's way faster. You're not chasing them on the floor and the counter and everywhere. You would have to almost chop each individual cranberry if you did it without. And I'm slicing these very fine. So they're little circles. I don't want big chunks. This salsa really is a game changer. The first time I heard about it, I was like, I don't know about cranberry salsa. But I made it anyway. And now, both on my side of the family and my husband's side of the family, it's now a traditional dish that we have, appetizer. I'm going to add a few more ingredients here. Let me just wash my hands and get this put away. So the juice of two limes, which is probably, I don't know, two tablespoons, three tablespoons. We'll taste it just to double check. This is my handy grocery list in action. I used um, all the sugar. Salt. I used all the uh, olive oil and the lemon juice. Where's the sugar? I used it all. Wait, there's no sugar? You use all the sugar? I don't think we want to use powdered sugar. Or brown sugar. Yeah, I'll uh, see if... This is why I keep a stocked pantry! <laughs> <laughs> well, if I climb up there, I might have one of those giant cluster bags. And I don't think brown sugar would be good in this recipe. I do substitute brown sugar a lot for white sugar because I it gives things a more depth of flavor. That's why I put brown sugar in my pumpkin... Oh! Durham. I mean, that will dissolve over the next... I think so. It's yeah. Big. Demerada, Demerada. My mom does, we found sugar. It's just that really thick, bigger sugar. But this is gonna sit for 24 hours, so it's probably fine, it'll probably dissolve. It's the Demerada, Demerada sugar, the thicker stuff. This is usually what you decorate cookies and stuff with. 
It's what I use at my coffee bar for uh, company because it's pretty. Yeah. So you can use anywhere between three fourths and one cup of sugar. We'll start with three fourths of sugar and then tomorrow we'll taste it and see. So we probably won't be able to add more tomorrow because it won't have time to dissolve, but that'll dissolve between now and tomorrow. This is one of those recipes that actually is better the longer it sits. So if you need to make a head appetizer recipe, this is a great go-to one because you really want all those flavors to marry together. Oh my gosh, it smells. Oh, it does smell good. It's so good. And it's so pretty. So the way you serve this cranberry salsa, and I'll show you tomorrow when we go to serve it, is you actually put this over cream cheese and you put it over whipped cream cheese. Whipped cream cheese is expensive. It was like $7 almost. So you can make your own whipped cream cheese and I'll show you how to do that. Right here. So all you have to do is put... <laughs> all you have to do is put room temperature cream cheese in a bowl and whip. It takes a few minutes to whip. So if you're like, this is not whipping, this is not getting whipped. I made this yesterday because I'm bringing this actual same recipe to a friend's giving tonight. And I probably had it in my stand mixer for probably four or five minutes whipping. So don't be discouraged, just keep whipping. Your sauce, you can put that in the dish and then that's done. What else do we need to do today? Beans. I got this done. Like we've mentioned, one of the hardest things about Thanksgiving or any big party where you have a lot of food is getting everything out and hot and served at the same time because you don't want to have one cold side dish that's supposed to be hot and everything else is hot or vice versa. So my mom's going to go over how she kind of works her way backwards and she knows when things need to go into the oven or into the crock pot or all those things so that everything is served and hot all at the same time. Go ahead. For this particular Thanksgiving, my plan is to serve dinner at two o'clock. So when I create my, um, my timetable, I start at two o'clock and work my way up. So I determine how long the turkey has to roast and how long it has to rest and then I count backwards and enter those times in. I do the same with the ham. I do the same with the vegetables. I do everything from have it done at 2 o'clock. And most of the time we're within 10 minutes either way. And I'll tell you what really uh, took it to the next level for me is that I set my alarm on my phone or my watch for each of these increments. So I didn't have to keep in my brain, oh, at 12.45 I need to do X, Y, Z. And keep in my mind the next time frame. I just set a time for two o'clock, 1.45, 1.30, 1.15, and on up. So when my alarm rang, I could stop the conversation at a good point and come and take care of what I needed to do. And then I could focus on my guests and still know that my food's going to be in the oven or out of the refrigerator or whatever the thing is at the time it needs to be to serve dinner at two, everything all done at one time. And one other thing I've learned in, to do is include somewhere visible is the menu. Because I can't tell you how many times we've sat down to a, a holiday meal and then we've eaten it and I'm putting it away and in the refrigerator was another salad or something else that I forgot to get out. So if I put my list here, then I know I've got everything that we're having for dinner for that day. So my mom is gonna season up the turkey. And what I'm gonna do while she's doing that is I got the platter for the cranberry dip. And I'm gonna put the whipped cream cheese on the platter that it's supposed to go on. The reason you wanna whip the cream cheese is just so that it's not just a complete solid block and it's a lot easier to get your cracker into the cream cheese. I'm gonna take some toothpicks and just stick them into the cream cheese so when I put the saran wrap on, it's not touching the, whip, the whipped cream cheese. And I have another pack of fresh sage left over. So I'm gonna put that in the body cavity of this turkey. You need any butter? All right, this is gonna go in the refrigerator and that's ready for the salsa. Now don't you tug do something with the wings? You tuck them somewhere? You can tuck them underneath. Otherwise they're just going to burn. Just oh, like that, that works. That might make him sit up a little more even. Oh yeah, it looks like he's got elbows. We're going to put the cranberry sauce in the serving dish. 
Perfect. One more thing completely done. Since this is served cold, all we have to do is pull this out and put it on the counter. One more tray done. I even just went ahead and saran wrapped the serving utensil in there just so it would be in there and we wouldn't lose it. This is going in the fridge and I think we are basically done. Hudson's hummus and I'm making the allergy friendly cupcakes. If you didn't hear my mom, my mom is making some allergen friendly cupcakes, some chocolate chip, some pumpkin chocolate chip muffins, or cupcakes, I should say cupcakes. We're gonna call them cupcakes. And then she also is gonna make some allergen friendly hummus. But I think I actually need to head home about 2 30 right now and i actually am going to a friend's giving tonight and i have a bunch of appetizers that i actually need to finish up so i need to give myself enough time to get home freshen up especially because i just spilled asparagus pickle juice all over myself and get those appetizers done there's not much to do i did 90 percent of the work yesterday all i have to do is actually put a couple things in the oven have them cook and then i probably i was going to pick up some baguettes at the grocery store so I should probably do that on the way home. We basically have everything on our list done. We got the stuffing done, the pies done, both apple and pumpkin. The rolls we'll take care of tomorrow. We got the cranberry sauce done. We got this cranberry salsa done, mashed potatoes, stuffing, veggie tray, relish tray, and turkey and ham done. We tried to clean up as we went, so it's not terrible, um, but there is definitely, the sink does have dishes in it. The floor needs to be swept and mopped, but my dad will do that. He's taking a nap right now. And then we'll see you back here tomorrow, and you'll just see how we'll put everything together and wrap it up, and it'll be a lot easier tomorrow. My mom probably is also going to set the tables tonight, I would yes. assume. Yes. Yeah, she's going to set the tables tonight. And that's it. So I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Yeah. So I haven't left yet. And look how cute those turned out. I really do need to go, though. <laughs> Good morning friends, welcome back. It's now the next day and I'm actually at my mom's house a little bit earlier than I needed to just because I figured I'd come over here, hang out with her, chill, kind of get the rest of the things prepped slowly and I would edit a video. This is actually the, this is the make ahead appetizer video. I hope you guys enjoyed that because that will have been out now. And now it is time actually to get the turkey and the ham going. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. We have the turkey here that we prepped yesterday. It looks really nice. We have our roaster. It's set at 325. So we're just gonna put the lid on here and we have how long it's supposed to cook based on the weight and everything like that. It's, my mom has it written down. And now we're gonna go outside and we are gonna put the ham on the trigger. I have to tell you a funny story. I'm still in my jammies, so I'm not <laughs> in the camera. But I laid in bed last night and I remembered I didn't boil those giblets. And then I remembered I didn't take the giblets out of the turkey. I just crammed the, I rinsed it, <laughs> we and I crammed it full of onions and apples and sage. So this morning I had to uh, uh, dissect the turkey, pull the stuffing <laughs> stuff out, and find the bag of giblets. So pro tip, if you are cooking uh, something on a Traeger that's heavy, put it on a cookie sheet so you can lift it. We've tried to do this before where we just do the foil pan and it doesn't work. Can't hold the weight. I'm gonna show you a couple of other things inside that my mom did and prepped after I left last night. I'm not used to having a camera person. Usually I do all my own filming, so this is a little bit different. It's kind of fun. <laughs> so my mom went ahead and set the table. We're having 13 people here. Isn't it gorgeous? And um, we have the adult table here. Usually the kids, my nieces and nephews, like to sit here. And then my mom just has another table set here. And then let's show you what we got over here. We still have our serving platters out that we are gonna put the stuff on as soon as it comes out. We took out the mashed potatoes and just so they could kind of come up to room temperature so they're not stone cold. To make it fit in the refrigerator, I had to turn the lid upside down so there was a dent in it. So I just stuck a pat of butter in it. 
perfect. My mom has out for the green beans, all the stuff out she needs for the gravy. Oh, and look at down the list. All the stuff that's marked off, we've already accomplished. So my mom also set out the beverages over here and we're gonna do the punch in here. Well, it won't make that for a while because it's still really early. And just some other beverages. She puts a Sharpie out so people can mark on their cup what they're having and then we'll make some water. All right, my mom is dressed and ready to go. She just sprayed each of these pans with just a little bit of cooking spray and we are gonna get the rolls ready. You know, we could maybe cover these with uh, tea towels. Oh yeah, and save plastic. Yeah, I have, I have a few tea towels. My sister and her kids are over, so we got all the appetizers out and got a pile of Legos over there. My mom is about to take out of the oven the peppers. Mm -hmm. Here are the peppers. They are so good. So good. <laughs> How much longer does it have, Mom? I'd have to look at my uh, chart on the wall, my countdown sheet. I don't know. Because it's on the wall, I don't have to think about it. Because every time the alarm rings, I go and see what is supposed to be done at that time. It's starting to get loud in here because people are here. So if you hear screaming or good. yelling in the background, that's why good. things are happening. Potatoes. We have I'm so stirring them up. I'll probably have to add a little more Liquid. moisture. Smells good. Smells so good in here. We got the veggies out. And these are actually taking a little bit longer to rise. So we stuck them in the oven for just a second to try to get them into a warm oven to try to speed up the process. Oh, this is Becky's dad and I'm filming. Uh, first time filming, so... Uh, well, we have Emily here, Becky's sister, and she is always the one who carves the turkey. Or whatever. She carves whatever it is. Carves whatever it is. She loves it. Emily, you want to give us any tips on carving? I always cut the entire breast off the turkey. Do you? And then... She doesn't do the thin slices. No, I don't do the thin slices. And then slice the breast. That looks good. How is it? Is it moist this year? Or is it? Yeah. It looks really like good. it's moist. We'll good. Taste it. Looks good. And I try and leave the skin on because some people like the skin. Mm -hmm. Although this. It's really. That's a, a really good rub. It's really a trick to get a turkey so that it's nice and moist and not dried out. So then you, when you display it, you have your nice, beautiful breast. That's a really good rub. The ham. This smells really good. Does it look good? Yeah. Looks like there were uh, really nice rubs put on those. Yeah. How's it look? It smells delightful. Although, uh, you got to be careful not to poke your knife through the bottom of your aluminum foil. Yeah, you got a lot of juice in there. This is a little bit of the broth and cornstarch due to allergies. We can't use flour. And now I'm just going to whisk this in, bring it to a boil, and it will be beautiful. Butternut squash. That's what I meant to say. Butternut squash. And I saw you put something in earlier. So I want to be completely honest with you. This is not what these rolls are supposed to look like. They did not obviously proof enough. And they were total fail. Well, not total fail. They taste really good. The flavor is fantastic. They're just not fluffy like they normally are. We're still enjoying them. They're delicious. <laughs> just give you the glory today. And thank you for this wonderful food. Mm -hmm. And all the hands that prepared it, bless them, bless them, bless them. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray amen. for Gizmo. Yes, and we do pray for Gizmo. Pray for Gizmo. Lord, that you touch his body. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just stepped out of the room. Everyone is making up their plates right now, and I came in here, so it would be just a little bit quieter. I hope you guys enjoyed this Thanksgiving prep video with us. My mom and I had a great time. Thank you for spending time with us. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If, if you know anybody that would benefit from this video, please consider sharing it with them. If you like cooking videos, I have a ton of cooking videos. So if you're interested in that, I'll put some videos up here on bolt cooking. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Oh, this thing, it's ready, Ann. Throw in here. Making whipped cream. Yum, yum. Becky's whipped cream, but... Huh?
We've already dug in. We've got pumpkin pie, Marionberry pie, and apple pie. Baby approved.